Onto the chainsaw, most iconic in the hands of Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is a terrible weapon in many ways, as shown by Zombie Go Boom. It's heavy and unwieldy, it needs fuel, it can kick back, uh, it's hard to start if not properly maintained, clothing can make it stall if it gets drawn in, uh, it's a saw, it doesn't slice or cleave after all. And even if it does cut, it's slow. It's not like in the movies where it just, just goes through immediately. Uh, depending on the engine power and bar length, of course, the more heavier, more powerful ones are, of course, going to be faster, but they're also even clunkier. When meeting resistance, especially at the tip of the bar, it can wrench it out of your hands. That's the kickback that I mentioned before. Um, the chain also pops off when struck. So it's not as amazing as horror movies make it out to be, but at the same time, there are plenty of horrible injuries from chainsaw accidents. Uh, don't Google that, by the way. It's, it's not pretty in any way. The hands and head would be particularly vulnerable. Limbs as well, depending on the outfit. Even if it stalls, it would be a very painful experience, I imagine. So under ideal circumstances, if nothing goes wrong and the saw works properly, the damage potential is, of course, very high. Um, and of course, there's a sheer intimidation factor. Um, defense? Um, it's a large object to hide behind. Um, it's not going to take weapon impacts well. It's not designed to, of course. If you hacked into it with <laughs> some of the other weapons, it's just not going to function terribly well. It's sad. The chain can pop off. Things like that. Speed is abysmal. It's heavy, it's clunky, it's not supposed to be used like that. Reach, you can't cut with the tip because of the aforementioned kickback. Um, it depends heavily on the bar length. I went with something sort of average. And of course, it's tiring to keep it fully extended. So it's somewhat limited. Ease of carry, uh, come on, there's no way to wear it. Again, it's heavy, it's... Uh, yeah, terrible in that regard. Uh, for grappling, it kind of sucks, because you can't bring the bar too close to yourself. And once somebody gets close enough to get a hold of the chainsaw itself, you know, away from the bar, then it becomes pretty difficult to use it. Uh, but who wants to actually rush in and get close to a chainsaw? That's really the one thing that redeems it, you know, aside from it does a lot of damage if everything goes right with this, this thing. It's also, it is extremely discouraging to approach. I honestly think the sickle, the blade stick, and even the knife are better weapons as such. But when I thought about it, I really wouldn't want to face a chainsaw with one of those. So I guess I have to put it here. A demolition saw would probably work better, I think. It would eliminate a lot of the drawbacks, but it's also extremely clunky, of course. Uh. <sighs> Fuck this thing. Okay. Onto the axe. You see it in plenty of movies. You know, Friday the 13th, of course, of The Shining. Uh, you've got uh, the Hatchet franchise with Victor Crowley's short double axe, which is pretty interesting. In Jeepers Creepers 3, he's got an axe with three spikes. The most iconic, I would argue, is the fire axe that Jack Torrance uses. So I'm going to go mainly with that. Attack power. This is where the axe really is shining. If you do hit your intended moving target, it's devastating. It can also deal with armor, uh, it can break down doors, it can do all kinds of things. It's also very hard to block or parry. Um, and if you do a two-handed block where you support your weapon with the other hand, that's kind of what the axe user wants if they know what they're doing because they can wrench it down and wreck you pretty much. So unless you have a weapon hefty enough to displace it by striking into it, 
evasion is your best bet. Defense is okay with some limitations. It really needs either more length, in case of a two-handed axe, or a shield for a single-handed axe. You know, a fire axe or a splitting axe, something like this, is not really great, depending on the size of the axe head. And the fire axe is actually pretty good in that regard because it's also got the spike on the other side. You can use that for defense and trying to catch something on that. Uh, one could try to you know, do the two-handed block like this in between, but then of course the hands are vulnerable or, you know, just try to strike into it to displace it. Things like that. Our speed is not great. It's of course much better with a smaller hatchet. Kind of clunky compared to an actual battle ax designed for that purpose because they are much thinner and very fast. And of course, then you also got the reach. Speaking of reach, it's worse than you may think because using the other arm limits your reach compared to keeping just one arm extended and rotating the body more, particularly depending on the hand position, because if you want this to be faster, you want to choke up on it. If you want it more powerful, I'm going to move down, but if you choke up, then you got really short reach. So depending on the hand position, the reach can vary quite a bit. Uh, as far as grappling is concerned, a good thing with an axe is you can choke up on it. The problem is that, of course, that the opponent can grab the handle as well, which could be a disadvantage. For ease of carry, it's kind of cumbersome and you could try to stick in your belt, but it's going to be a lot more awkward than most of the previous weapons, uh, minus the chainsaw, obviously, but it's not too bad. Yeah, how are you gonna deal with this kind of power? Not directly. Uh. Onto the machete. Yep, Friday the 13th. Jason has used all kinds of objects on his bloody campaign against horny teenagers, but he keeps coming back to the good old machete, for good reason. Uh, there's good amount of variety. Uh, the one in Freddy vs. Jason even has a guard. The design from Jason X looks like a Parang machete, possibly enhanced by nanites, I suppose. This really blurs the line between tool and weapon. You know, there are martial arts systems using machetes, you can use them very effectively. Uh, depending on the type, it can favor either speed or power. Uh, it's usually a good amount of both. Highly effective in slashing and cleaving. Uh, some designs are also usable for thrusting and there are two-handed versions as well. As far as defense is concerned, it's great against similar weapons. You, know, you can do deflectional parries, uh, static blocks, checks, things like that. Uh, if you have to, you could also use it with two hands, you know, put one hand against the blade and, and try to block a heavier weapon like that if you need to. And a lot of machetes have the necessary mass to cut into an opponent's strike and displace it actively. Against quicker weapons, you can use a superior reach and you can use the speed and agility against more powerful weapons. Uh, as far as speed is concerned, depends on the type, but it's generally, I'd say, good or very good. The reach is interestingly about the same as the axe for the reasons I mentioned before. Uh, usefulness in grappling depends on the skill, but uh, there are definitely some good things you can do. You, know, you can strike with the grip and uh, you can, if you're very close, you can try to come over top, um, things like that. It's not as effective at such a short distance as a shorter blade, but you can definitely work with it to an extent. And uh, carrying, of course, is easy. You can just put it in the sheath on your belt. There you go. Why do I put the machete above the axe? Most horror axes are somewhat clunky, you know, like the fire axe. Now, a machete cannot block an axe, but an axe can block a machete, even though it's hard due to the speed difference. Uh, Overall, I would say in this case, agility wins over power. You would just have to evade, maneuver effectively. Next up is the spear. It keeps doing it. The spear is used in Friday the 13th and Jeepers Creepers. In Friday the 13th part six, it's actually a piece of a fence rather than a proper spear, but 
still works the same way. And uh, the Creeper is defeated with spears in Jeepers Creepers 2 and uses one himself in 3. I guess you learn from that experience. Anyway, um, this is probably the fakest looking prop I've ever seen. Uh, maybe don't do extreme close-ups when it looks that obviously plasticky, latex, slurpy, whatever the heck it is. Anyway, this could rank very differently depending on the situation. Uh, if you have enough space, a spear dominates most other weapons. Uh, basically anything other than pole arms, <laughs> essentially. Uh, very quick thrusts and uh, slower but powerful strikes and uh, you can see how awkwardly I'm maneuvering here because I've got some stuff standing around. That's of course the main problem, we'll get back to that. Um, if you've got no wings or lugs, there is the danger of an impaled enemy still attacking, you know, particularly if it was um, the real life mundane equivalent to a horror monster, so maybe some crackhead who doesn't feel pain or I don't know. Anyway, so the defensive capability comes from its reach, of course. You know, if you keep everything and everyone far away from you and threaten them, they're not really going to be able to do much to you. Also, the long half can be used for parries and blocks and, you know, deflections. If it's just wood, of course, you have durability issues. If it's an all-metal spear, it's slower but can block most things. So that's a good thing about the piece of fins. Speed, as far as thrusts are concerned, very fast. Uh, for strikes, about average. And obviously the reach is unbeatable, far beyond all the other weapons. Grappling. In that situation, it's terrible. That's one of the main weaknesses of a spear. You can try to use the half to maybe hook the legs to help with takedowns, things like that. But basically, once shorter weapons have managed to get past the point, it's over, pretty much. They can grab the half, they can just annihilate you with the faster weapon that's much easier to maneuver up close. Ease of carry, well, it's a clunky walking stick at best. You can't wear it, obviously. You know, even if you just want to rest it for a bit, I mean, I gotta kind of awkwardly put it down. So even the king of weapons, as some people like to call a spear, has its drawbacks and limitations. Did you get the spear stuck in the ceiling? Yes, I got stuck in the ceiling. Nice job. Oh. Oh. <sighs> what is it with you? So, which weapon could possibly be better than a spear in real life? Well, there is Sleepy Hollow. The Headless Horseman has Longsword. Yeah, big surprise. I would claim that the Longsword is the best weapon out of these. Uh, we'll get back to why I think that compared to the Spear. Uh, sickles also make an appearance, by the way, in Sleepy Hollow. Dual Sickle, even. That's pretty cool. Um, so, a Sword Cut has more stopping power. Even though a Thrust is more lethal, a cut is more likely to end the fight pretty quickly, or at least incapacitate the threat. You know, if you faced a real-life Leatherface wannabe with a chainsaw, you wouldn't really want to stab them, unless you do it just quickly, in and out, and immediately create distance. Because if you just, you know, ran him through, he probably would still come at you with a chainsaw, which is um, not fun times, obviously. Uh, but you have the option either way. In terms of defense, it's great. You've got plenty to work with. You've got a long blade, even though you can't effectively defend with the entire length of it, but a lot of it you can use, of course. And uh, you can also, again, you do it with two hands, uh, things like that. You can also again, counter pretty effectively, interrupt attacks. Uh, you know, it's not heavy, 
you know, it shouldn't be at least. So that's all good. Uh, as far as speed is concerned, good. It can't keep up with short light weapons, of course. You know, like a long sword is, is perfectly fast, but just you can't compare it to a knife or even a machete necessarily. Uh, depends on the longsword. Reach is obviously very good. It's only outperformed by the spear. And uh, the blade on the sword from Sleepy Hollow looks fairly short compared to a lot of real life longswords, but you still get a pretty good reach. And um, as far as ease of carry is concerned, obviously more cumbersome than knives or machetes, but reasonable, you know, with a good scabbard and in a sword belt you can carry it. it's going to dangle around a little bit it's going to get in the way here and there compared to most of the other weapons that we've talked about but it's a sword you know people did it for a long time and uh, it works so yeah that's all i've got let me know what you agree and disagree with uh, feel free to complain about all the weapons that I haven't included that appear in horror movies. I had to decide on 10 and you know, these are just the ones that I found most interesting to look at. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween and uh, have a good one folks.